What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another amazing episode of Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast. This is your host, Brian, a.k.a. El Nino. And today I'm joined with... Brian Saber, Captain Cleveland, Browns, Cavs, Indians. <laughs> and today we have a very special guest, none other than the one and only Bear Walker in the building. Bear, thank you so much for joining us today, my friend. Thanks for having me, man. I don't have any taglines or AKAs, but uh, you gotta barely. have one, man. That's that's the rule. We uh, we gave Brad was on last week. Brad Lambert. We gave him what you, Mr. Him? Hollywood. Mr. Hollywood. I like it. So you can be like the skate king or something like that. There we go. The deck, the deck the, the, king. The king of decks. The deck king. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Tiger King's really hot right now. I guess you know we we can go with Bear King, Skate King, whatever you want. <laughs> Love it, man. Love it. Well, uh, you know, for, for our listeners, followers who, who, who may not have, have heard of you, uh, you know, if you can, just tell us a little bit, you know, about you, about the decks, the brand, how you got started, the whole nine yards. Sure. Yeah. Well, so my name is Bear Walker. I make handcrafted premium skateboards, usually like heavily infused with pop culture. Uh, but yeah, what makes us unique is I carve out the designs and the grip itself. So it's like all made out of wood with like my patent pending carved texture uh, but yeah, I get to enjoy the artwork on the top. You know, I think it's a good like conversation starter. It's handcrafted, made in America. It just has a cool vibe about it. Uh, but yeah, we uh, are heavily pop culture infused, like I said. So uh, I get to make things that I've been super passionate about my whole life. And then you could actually skate on it, which is cool. But uh, we've been around for about four years or so. Uh, just kind of hit our swing a couple years ago. Uh, gained a few celebrity clientele and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And that's helped, you know take us to the next level for sure i don't want to talk about the decks yet <laughs> okay all right yeah it's about me it's about me yeah so yeah I, I love sports um you live in alabama right mm -hmm. yeah you're from alabama right i'm from south carolina okay oh, okay but you live in alabama you're from so that's what that's where the clemson thing came in that's where it gets interesting. Okay, so yeah. I was going to ask, man, if you're from Alabama and you went to Clemson, like you said, I read an article. I'm not sure. I read a few articles, the Forbes one, and the, the there was another skateboarding magazine one where you talked about Clemson being your dream school. How did that whole thing come about, those types of things? I'm just interested. Yeah, well, so I grew up in South Carolina. So there was like the huge tra or, uh, Clemson-USC rivalry, you know. So that's what I grew up with, and I was like diehard orange. But it was great because, uh, you know, I moved to Alabama about five years ago, right when Clemson actually like, got good. <laughs> good, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and so I was like, I have, like, my Clemson credit card and my Clemson wallet and my Clemson stickers in my car, and I'm pulling up into Alabama when we're in the midst of this, like, national championship <laughs> stuff. I'm, I'm loving every time I'm paying for something, you know. It's like, yeah, that's right, Clemson. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's been funny moving here and having, like, it's almost even more of an extreme rivalry than Clemson USC is this Clemson Alabama thing. And I get to yeah, be for sure. in the midst of it. I always love a little confrontation. So it's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, so what, what, what prompted the move to Alabama from, from Clemson or, you know, South Carolina? Uh, that's actually one of my favorite parts about the story, man. I started my, uh, my skate company originally in South Carolina and it like failed miserably, you know, but uh, I thought it was a really good idea. And so, you know, I had one of those like kind of soul searching moments. I was like 25 years old. My, my business failed, but I thought it could be successful. So I kind of sucked it up and moved in with my parents in Alabama. So I moved, you know, eight hours away, had to live in this like shitty little uh, like one bedroom section of a barn. Uh, but anyway, I saved, I worked construction and saved up for two years to buy the machinery again to start this version of the company. And uh, yes, long story short, moved here for you know, the ability to kind of have a fresh restart and save up for a while. And uh, that's really what helped launch this version of the company. I think piggyback on that, you know, you have sort of an unconventional distribution model, right? You talked yeah. about how, you know, you tried to go uh, to like skate shops or whatever, and, and that didn't really work out. They kind of told you to kick rocks or whatever. Pretty so much, now yeah. you're doing everything. Uh, through the website and you talked about storefronts in, in one of the articles mm -hmm. that I read. Talk a little bit about the storefronts, what those are, how people can find your products, those kind of things. Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, people basically like, like skate shops told me my shit sucked basically, you know, it's like, it was something like they had never really seen. Uh, you know, it was like too different, but that's, that's, you know, what's, what's good about us now. But anyway, so I had to be creative and, and that's where I really started getting into like the collector's pieces and limited edition shit and selling it just on my site, bearwalker.com. And uh, 
through that though, I got to kind of have a unique view on, on how we can actually grow and, and, you know, brick and mortar is kind of dying, but you know, I've, I've built this brand and this reputation and like, and my boards are so much better to see in person that I still wanted to have that, that possibility. So now we're looking at building like really high end skate shops and collectible shops and select places around the world. So we'll probably have about three in the next couple of years here in the U S we're opening up one uh, right near Manhattan here soon. I'll be opening up one in LA in the next year. Um, and then we're looking at like Tokyo and Dude, that's and, awesome. Yeah. So it should be pretty cool, but there'll be, that's the only place you'll be able to find them. And uh, it'll be our bear Walker brick and mortars. Damn, man. That, I got to follow great. up. I got to follow up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you plant a tree for every board you sell. Yeah. I thought that was um, awesome. Like, just, just the idea Thanks, of man. giving back, um, you know, being, um, you know, conscious of the environment and things like that. You know, what gave you the idea of doing that? And, and I couldn't find, where do you plant these trees at? I couldn't, I couldn't find that. Oh yeah, no, it's all just a, a scam. No, no, but I, <laughs> I'm actually gonna one up it. Yeah, yeah, everyone loves it. No, no, no. But uh, no, dude, like uh, being, you know, like uh, conscious of the environment, and everything's always been really important to me. I'm, you know, I've I've grown up hunting and camping, and and I've really been integral into into nature. But uh, but yeah, I just thought it'd be cool to, you know, kind of replenish it. Like I think you can get about three or four hundred boards out of a tree, you know. So it's like. We're, we're doing pretty good, but yeah, there's, there's just like, there's sites where you, you know, pay a dollar to plant a tree, you know, so that's pretty much where that comes from. But what we're doing now is uh, all of our byproducts, like the sawdust we make, there's a local farm that grows mushrooms, like, like, you know, food mushrooms. <laughs> uh, and so uh, <laughs> we give them all of our sawdust and they actually grow the mushrooms with it. And that creates compost. And then we're looking, I'm talking with the city right now about using the compost to grow a botanical garden with a pump track around it. And so then, you know, it'll be like completely full circle, but we're, we're doing a lot with the byproduct of the boards now too, as long, as well as planting a tree for each board sold. That's really impressive, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, so, you know, as, as far as the pop culture thing, you know, as, you know, going back to where you can remember what, what were some of your first and even some of your still favorites, you know, whether comic books, cartoons, you know, some of the, some of your favorite characters. I mean, we've seen you do it all. I love the Infinity Gauntlet one you have. Love this, it. Um, Brad actually Thank showed you. us the uh, the Spider-Man one that's going to go to Tom Holland, which is dope. Yeah, as yeah. So, you know, just give us a little bit of backstory on that. Sure, man. Well, you know, I think the, the my favorite part about pop culture is like everyone can have a conversation about it and have different viewpoints on like what their favorite villain is or what their favorite hero is. And yeah. like, even if they agree on the same superhero, it's like, no, he's cool because of this. You know what I mean? You can get into like crazy conversations about it. So I just, I've always loved how diehard the fan base is. But anyway, uh, what connects me to it is it connects me to people now, but it was my connection to my people uh, back in the day. Like my grandpa has been taking me or had been taking me to movies since I like was basically in a, in a stroller, you know what I mean? And we would all like every week we'd go see a movie and like, that's what we would talk about during the week and, and get pumped about other movies coming out. And then when I was probably about 10 or so, started taking me to comic book shops. I really started getting into like, you know, Spider-Man and like uh, the Civil War line was really, really awesome. And then, uh, you know, just like being able to, to have that be a connector for, for me and my family and then me and my friends and now me and my clients is something we yeah. can all talk about. Pretty dope. Yeah, that's awesome. It's funny you say that too, because uh, we, I did an interview a while back and it's definitely one of those things. And that's why we started this podcast because it was all we ever really talked about anyways, you know, whether yeah. it was MCU movies or DC or, you know, TV shows. So I was like, why don't we go ahead and start this? And just like you, my parents are taking me to the movies since stroller as well. And now that I'm a parent that I can't tell you how many countless birthday parties we've had for my daughter that have taken place in a movie theater I mean, that's, that's really awesome, all like, we ever talk about is, is well, like, now you can like show her some of your old favorite movies from when you were a kid and saw them with your parents, you know, yeah. and, and act over that, you know? Oh, so, yeah. yeah. And, and that goes either way too, because um, we actually, <laughs> it was on Netflix. So I went ahead and popped in killer clowns from outer space. <laughs> and, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> she was, she was not a fan of special effects. <laughs> <and practice. laughs> so we, we've come a long way. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Uh, absolutely. That's crazy, man. You know, yeah, I, I know that you don't, you don't necessarily have a skateboarding background per se, right? 
you're a surfer and you got a little yeah, bit of I, I grew up surfing. Yeah, yeah. So I think one of the things that's really interesting about this is because, you know, I don't skateboard and I never have even when I was a kid. So, you know, I see the boards more as art, right? For and, sure. And, you know, how do you see them? Do you see them as, you know, like a functional skateboard? Or, or when you're building these things, do you really see them as, as a piece of art that you would prefer to see hung on the wall? Well, dude, I like, I actually see them both equally. What I tell people all the time is like, I'm not an astronaut, but I can build the shit out of a spaceship. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. So it's like, you know, I'm a, I have a woodworking background and a surf background. So I know balance and flow and the feel of it and then craftsmanship. So it's like, these things are great pieces of art, but like, I put like scrutinous amount of detail into making them high functioning yeah. too. Like I spent years finding the perfect combination of wood for it to, to kind of balance out me carving into it. But yeah, so it has good flexibility, good durability. I have all high-end components. I actually even like started my own wheel company so that I could have like the perfect feel uh, wheel to go with the board. So like just as much attention to detail that goes into the actual art goes into the function of it too. Your, your designer, um, Amanda, Amanda Rachels, you talked mm -hmm. about her, right? Talk about how she designs yeah. all the boards. You do the woodworking, but she actually does the design work. Well, she does. So I do majority of the designing, but she does all of our like portrait and comic book kind of stuff. So if, like, oh, okay. I'm, I'm really good with like the graphic elements and composition. I'm almost like the art director and then she's yeah. the artist. So it's like when it comes to like an actual portrait or something, she always does those and she kills it. But she actually has like her own, uh, like comic brand as well. Uh, God. I'm, I think it's inverse. Yeah. Inverse comics. I'm cool. I should, yeah, I want to give her a shout out. When I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. She's super talented. Well, shout yeah. out to Amanda. I, you know, I, you, you mentioned her in one article and I thought, man, you know, she's got to be a big, a big piece of this operation. So I wanted to make sure that we got a plug in there for her. I appreciate that, man. Let's plug everybody. I love Brad Lambert, my manager, Amanda Rachels, my artists. They're all great. <laughs> yeah, a couple other people, you're, you're, um, the guy that's kind of managing the shop now. Um, Kevin, is his name Kevin? Oh, so, uh, yeah, he was managing my shop last year. Uh, so we got, we got a lot of new crew. Kevin yeah. actually, uh, he, uh, he, we started growing pretty rapidly and he was always like a chill surfer skate dude. And the shop definitely isn't chill anymore. We, uh, we are going full blast. So like we parted ways amicably, you know, oh, but we my have bad. my new, oh yeah, you're such a dick, dude. No. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you bring that shit up? Read yeah. <laughs> articles from 2019. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's all news, man. But no, we got, uh, yeah, we got Mason who's our new production manager. He's been killing it, doing great. But yeah, we've, uh, you know, we always have a pretty good family vibe here. So Kevin, you know, still comes to shit and we talk and all that. But, uh, but yeah, we've, uh, we've been building out our crew. When Kevin was here, we had like two people. Now we have eight, you know, to kind of show you how hectic it's gotten. And we're hiring about five more people over the next month. Yeah. So like the crew is growing. For yeah. Sure. It's all, I mean, you, you, look, your website's awesome. Whoever designed your website, I just want to say that they did, did an yeah. outstanding job, but a, 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 you know, you're talking about your, your team growing, right? Uh, you know, you, you team's growing. You've talked about wanting to be like a world-renowned skate brand, right? Yeah. And it sounds like yeah. you're doing big things. You got these brick-and-mortar shops coming. But you said, I want to be a world-renowned skate brand, but I also want to remain small and exclusive, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of th – those are kind of conflicting – ideology so so how do you do that man like I, Dude, I my, my brand is great. my brand is conflicting ideologies man. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> okay for sure. uh but no man i mean like you know it's like a lot of artists out there you know they're world renowned but they have you know just a small crew that makes these quality pieces you know like daniel arsham is one of my heroes i'm, I'm not sure if you've heard of him but uh We're yeah, he's actually doing like we have but we haven't <laughs> yeah, he did. Like, Very nice yeah. Work. yeah. <laughs> But no, he's really dope and he has a small crew too. But like, basically, I'm trying to build it enough to where, you know, we have the reputation to where we can, you know, kind of get these bigger deals. But, you know, a lot of these bigger companies want to do just like, you know, $10 things they can sell a million of and, and make right. quick bucks off of. And I'm, I'm always trying to provide a fan service where yeah. we're doing small batch, high quality stuff. No one's going to get rich off this shit, but we're making really cool shit. Yeah. And still making money, 
you know? So everyone's still winning, but no one's going to get rich off of it. But that's my goal is to make these crazy things that aren't being made out there, provide something cool and collectible for like diehard fans and be able to still grow and, and provide livings for my crew and, and, you know, like grow, grow my shit as well. You know, it's awesome. Excellent. Thanks, dude. Excellent. So, you know, I, we got it. We got to ask. And uh, this is one of the most serious questions that we ask. <laughs> Say we usually ask it, but I'm going to take the reins on this one. Who All is right. your favorite character in the MCU? Ooh, OK, man. Uh, I might have top three and give us a top three if you don't want to name one. But, you know, we, we sure. the fans want to know. We want to know. <laughs> All right. Cool. Cool. I'll, I'll do a top three. OK. Uh, Dr. Doom. That's awesome. Miles Morales and Venom. Wow. Nice. Nice. That's so you like list. the bad guys. Yeah. Well, Miles Morales obviously isn't a bad guy, yeah. but. Well, you know, you got like the uh, the infamous Iron Man story arc with with Dr. Doom where he's yeah. trying to be a good guy. I think there's more depth to the bad guys, seeing how they got there and then them trying to find redemption in, in some story arcs and, and all that kind of stuff, you know? And then Miles oh. Morales is just. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, man. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're good. I was just saying Miles Morales is so dope, too, because I've always loved Spider-Man, but then have, like, the blacked-out suit and then, like, Venom Blast and invisibility. It's badass. And, you know, growing up being such a huge pop culture fan, you always seeing, like, a kid become a superhero is, you know, pretty dope. You know, it's like uh, it's like nostalgia almost, you know? It's like, how badass would that be? But, but yeah, and that also came out, what, 2011, 2010? Something like uh, but anyway, so that was like when I was in like my hardcore heyday of, of comic books for sure. And, and seeing a new version of Spider-Man and all the new, and seeing the new new abilities pop up throughout issues. It's always dope. Nice. Nice. So, you know, speaking of speaking of Dr. Doom, him and I have had this conversation before. That's kind of my prediction for the next big so. bad for the MCU. Do you see it going that way or do you see somebody else because i don't think they're going to go right to galactus quickly i think they're going to yeah. introduce dr doom sooner than later like what's especially him being I one of your that. favorites what are your thoughts on that dude i'd love that and i'd love i'd love to see a cameo or a pop-up maybe in the multitude of uh of madness or what the multiverse of madness or whatever right. i feel like having an established dr doom and an established fantastic four come into the mcu where they've just yeah. kind of been like under the radar kind of thing would be dope we've done the origin stories for all that shit but like you know, kind of like the uh, what's that comic arc? The one where uh, where Miles Morales and like became part of like our universe and all that stuff, where Doctor Doom was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think no, Spider Verse, Spider Verse, Spider Verse. Was it? I thought it was like the Crisis of Infinite or, or right, no, Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. The, the comic book one, not the movie. Yeah, the comic books. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, we're all where everything merged into one, and like uh, Reed Richards stayed behind to make sure everything like stay cohesive or whatever but dr doom was like running all that shit and like kind of a good guy but like not really you know but it'd be cool seeing him almost like putting pieces back together in multitude of madness and and him just already being this like full powered dr doom yeah i mean nice nice awesome. do you have do you have a prediction on or even like a favorite on who you think might play that character oh man Ooh, uh, <laughs> that is a good with question the hard stuff. <laughs> yeah no that is a tough one dude uh yeah man i honestly don't have an answer for it dude i like uh yeah dude i like uh what's his name bad guys I yeah mean, i love well, jeffrey dude, dean morgan but i love him in just about everything yeah. <laughs> well dude i i need jeffrey dean morgan as uh thomas wayne you know like continuing yeah. uh the flashback yeah. so agreed yeah which is a whole different thing flash uh, so flashpoint is probably my favorite comic story arc ever nice so, yeah, so that'd be really dope. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and just just go into that tangent, so we can just skip the whole who would I <laughs> we'll cast the Doctor over. Doom thing. <laughs> yeah. We can always come yeah. back. Yeah, touch, touch. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but no, what's his name? Mar, uh, Mars, some the guy who played the villain in the original Doctor Strange movie. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, um, Chiwetel uh, Okafor? No, 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 no. 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 The uh, the guy like who the guy was like Hannibal, doing... right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can't oh, think no, of his name. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he yeah. Would be awesome. I think he'd make a dope Doctor Doom, but then that'd be uh, really confusing with him being the villain. <laughs> right. of the past. Strange, but uh, yeah, that'll be my answer for sure. 
<laughs> That's a good one. I'll do some research and, and send you a text later. There you <laughs> go. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely going to have you back on. It'll be and, a follow up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it. We'll just do a whole friggin' interview on casting choices for Doctor Doom on the next well, one. Yeah, that's a, that's a great episode. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned you mentioned uh, Brad Lambert. You know, we had an interview with him last week. Talk a little bit about how how you guys got hooked up. Obviously, it's a pop culture connection. But as far as you know, was it um, you know, like a marketing company? Like, how did your kind of connection come about and then him for for him becoming your manager too yeah no it was super organic man like uh that's how i like all my stuff to happen but uh mm -hmm. i saw a post where you know he uh started managing someone that you know our managing boss logic and we had just done that collaboration together mm -hmm. anyway i had just hit a point where we were you know we just sold out our our we had just done our first round of limited edition boards that sold out completely um and so we were we were starting on our upswing and i was like i could really use a manager to kind of help delegate these like movie deals and and help make some celebrity contacts and all that stuff and i uh saw his page and saw that he was working with boss and uh just like the the awesome like positive attitude he had and oh, yeah. anyway i just i sent him a yeah he's yeah he's great it's, it's but, contagious uh, yeah yeah for sure yeah i'm always like so if we get off the phone and then it's like <laughs> i get back to like my like woodwork and it's like oh yeah this, this is life. but uh Anyway, uh, I sent him a DM and was like, yo, we should connect. And uh, like about 15 minutes later, we we're on a phone call and we were just like shooting the shit, kind of like what we're doing right now, talking like yeah. pop culture and like cool things we'd like to do together. And like an hour later, it was like, oh, yeah. So like you want to like work together? And he's like, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. So uh, it was all super organic. We didn't even really have a contract for like three or four months because we were just talking about what we wanted to do. I went to L.A. We met in person and. And walked, did a tour of the WB studios, and he like introduced me to you know some of the higher ups there, and it's like yeah yeah you're the you're the dude for the job for sure. Yeah, so. for sure. <laughs> but yeah, he's he's dope, man. We we talk business all the time, but then halftime we're playing Warzone, Call of Duty, or we're just calling to be like like what cool shit's happening in your life today, you know, or whatever. So you're so. on the Warzone too, huh? Oh, dude, I'm. Do you like, play I, with uh, you play with him and his Steelers buddies? I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Love it. What's uh, what's your gamer tags for our for our for our fans out there? Uh Hiberium. Hiberium. Yeah. All so right. my, my wheel company, I actually just started a truck company too. Uh those are called Hiberium, but uh, yeah, H Y B E R I U M. I probably should not give that out. But yeah, sweet. <laughs> Follow me or tag me or from what we can tell, the majority of our fans seem pretty chill. So if anybody gives yeah, you shit, they're not related. They're not. They're not. Well, dude, with us. the worst version of me is the Call of Duty version. Oh, of that's me. everybody. Yeah, that's all of us. Yeah. <laughs> I, I rage quit. I, I started. Yeah. I, I haven't played it in like three weeks because the last time I played, I got so mad. So. <laughs> it's easy to do, man. It's like, why am I not an expert of this? And it's like, oh yeah, because I fucking. I'm a 30 year old man. Yeah. You because know? everybody else <laughs> cheats, man. They're all, they're yeah, all cheats. Yeah, that, yeah, they cheat. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's why, that's why they're good. <laughs> we got it. Yeah, that we're good. Um, I guess I'll go back. I'll, I'll circle back around to the boards. Um, uh, one of the things that is <laughs> Damn, coming yeah. is coming. And I don't know how much, you know, you can really talk about it is the NBA partnership with NBA Labs. Um, yeah, dude. I know that you got like six different boards coming. I'd, I'd love to hear about that. Sure. Yeah, dude, this is actually one of the rare collaborations I've coming up that I can completely talk about. Nice. So this is great. Yeah. Now, MB Labs, NBA Labs is dope. It's like a like an affiliate of NBA, and they uh, it's basically a way for artists and like smaller companies to be able to use these properties and make like really cool shit that that, that you don't have to go through like crazy approvals for like with these other people, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but so it really allows like a lot of create like creative stuff to come out of there. But uh, it's actually launching later this month. We're doing Chicago Bulls, Lakers, Warriors, uh, Heat, uh, the Nets. And someone else, <laughs> uh, Raptors, Raptors. Okay. Yeah, but they're uh, they're looking awesome. I haven't revealed much, but we're about to start showing a lot of the making of and all that behind the scenes stuff. But uh, but yeah, it, it's been fun, man. And working with uh, you know, like I said, we're heavy in the pop culture realm, and so we've been doing a lot of movie and comic book stuff. But like NBA fandom is really hardcore in yeah. pop culture, and it's like yeah. it's cool to do this whole other side of pop culture, you know. And I uh, get to dive into that side of stuff. But, I mean, yeah, sports, they turned out great. Yeah. Huh? I, 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 you know, I, I saw the LSU board, 
that you had a picture mm-hmm. of. I, I don't know if it was on your Instagram or what. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, you know, that was obviously awesome. And I envision that some right. of the NBA boards are going to be similar. Do you have other college stuff that you've done or because the LSU one was the only one I saw. Yeah. So that my, uh, that was for my brother-in-law. Uh, okay. He actually, yeah, he uh, supported the cause and bought a board and uh, he's super into LSU. So he was like, just make something for me. And so like, yeah, I made him uh, an LSU because he's diehard fans of it. Uh, but yeah, no other college stuff right now. I'm, you know, Clemson, I'm sure I might make something for here eventually. And then maybe a, a, a University of Alabama and I can, you know, make it look terrible, you know. <laughs> <laughs> have, like, have like a dead elephant laying on it. Yeah. <laughs> Just like all deformed and stuff. It's like, what? Yeah. This is great. <laughs> That's good. That's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. See, that's that's where I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to where I have like fuck you money to where I yeah. get these like collaborations. Be like, I hate this shit, so I'm just gonna like <laughs> mess it up, you know? Well, I mean, that's yeah. that's what it's all about too. I mean, uh, I tell people all the time, like we 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 like interviewing people, talking to people that have a, a great general interest of what we have. You know, we're not here. Same thing with sponsors too. Like, you're not gonna see a spot like you have like Kirby vacuum cleaners as a as a sponsor. Like, they're great vacuums, yeah. but. I don't give a shit about back ins. So, you know, it's yeah, important sure. to want to do these kind of projects because you're going to be passionate about it in the first place. And, you know, it's not going to be yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the cool thing is too, like in the comic realm and pop culture realm, it's like, there's, there's more material that I love than I could ever even make. So right. uh, I like, yeah, I don't have to make, you know, yeah. Vacuum skateboards. You know, <laughs> hey, man, that might be kind of cool, but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, that'd be dope, nice, man. Boring. Skate around your apartment and just like cleaning shit up. That'd be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, that was my idea. I'm, yeah, I'm taking that. <laughs> I mean, See, I'm that. You, you're an <laughs> yeah. entrepreneur at heart, um, obviously, right? Uh, you got skateboards, sure. you got apparel, you're obviously getting into the wheels and trucks, you got, you know, partnerships. What's next for you, man? Like, like what, what, what's the next area? maybe that, that you're not necessarily in today that you'd love to, you know, dip your toe in the water or even dive right into the pool, man. Sure. Well, uh, so here, here's a, a zero dark nerdy exclusive. I actually just started. Yeah. Yeah. But we need some, I'll send you some gifts or something. We need to have some fucking exclusive banners flashing over. Hell but anyway, yes. uh, I just started an electric board company. So we're going to be having electric boards soon. Uh, which is really exciting. Yeah. But, uh, aside from that, man, uh, we, uh, God, can I trying to think of what I should say? We're opening up a skate park. So that's going to be pretty huge. Uh, but yeah, outside of that, I'd say it's more personal stuff. Like I'm looking into opening a restaurant. Uh, I want to, you know, start buying some land and, and have some rental properties, all that kind of stuff, you know, old man shit, but, no, uh, man. yeah. <laughs> Hey, gotta look out for the future, homie. That's what oh, I wanted sure. to know. You know, that's, that's the yeah. stuff that, that that you know. I think you know, not not to keep harping on Brad, man, but Brad just talks about passion. What you're passionate about, mm-hmm. and lots of times, what you're what you're really passionate about is kind of things outside of what you do every single day. So I think yeah, it's important. for sure. Well, here, so like skateboarding and, and building these things really hat and this whole brand has become my life. So it's like it's really hard to deviate from it. But one thing that I'm super passionate about and does have to do with the future is like you know we're in alabama i'm on the gulf coast there's not a huge skate scene here so like one of my huge goals over the next five years or so is really growing the skate scene here but so i just bought uh the lot across the street from me and we're building this huge fantasy factory style uh manufacturing facility it's gonna have like a rock climbing wall and a pump track and a skate park and we're gonna be filming stuff out of there we got like a little tv show thing we're working on uh but anyway i'm trying like basically everyone who comes to my shop right now is always like, why? Like, I didn't know this was here. This is crazy. Like everyone gets excited about it. So I'm trying to do more events, uh, get, you know, kids outside, get kids interested in building shit with their hands, you know, and I really just want to help build a community of skate and entrepreneurship and craft and, you know, crafting things with your own two hands and fixing things instead of buying new shit, you know, but, but really get a good community feel going here and, and be an integral part of it. Dude, that's awesome, amazing. Man. That's amazing, man. Um, if, if you can talk a little bit, I mean, uh, 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 just a little bit about, 
you know, you said when you first started off it, that, you know, it was not a success and you were getting the no's. And one of the big things that we talk about here is, you know, just perseverance and, and overcoming obstacles, you know, give a little bit of, you know, your story to our listeners. Cause I mean, people, a lot of people don't realize like, listen, you're going to have some hits and misses plain and simple. Yeah. And, uh, for sure. you know, just how did you overcome that and just say, you know what, fuck all this. I'm going to, I'm still going to persevere and I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah. Well, so like, uh, first of all, is I feel like it's your mentality. Like I've, I've viewed all of the, these like terrible things that happen as a, a benefit to me. Like I graduated college in 2011 and there was like no fucking jobs, right. you know? So it's like, I had to bounce around and get these little odd jobs that ended up kind of combining and giving me inspiration to make these boards. So like at the time it seemed like it fucking sucked, but it was like really like the building block to like force me to kind of start my own company yeah, it like forced me to like take on these jobs where I gained skills I wouldn't have gotten elsewhere. Um, but the other thing I guess is having faith in yourself and believing that you can do shit because like I tried to get partners and tried to like hire people to do stuff for me mm. and it ended up just costing me time and money and a lot of like heartache and sure. I ended up doing it myself and you know through doing it myself learned a lot more shit that like became extremely valuable at this stage of my company. Um, but then also just like you know, realizing that this is, could be a viable thing that I believed that it had, it had legs to it, you know, that my, my thought, my dream was valid. And even though it failed that first time, it's like, okay, what can I do to make it happen? So moving in with my parents and saving up money mm -hmm. and then starting it back again on my own. And, you know, through those years of like fucking trials and tribulations and all that shit, it really did prepare me for what's going on right now. If all this had been handed to me and the success hit one year in, I'd be making extremely expensive mistakes. Right. You know, I wouldn't, I would be probably like sitting on my ass a lot of the time. Like I've like put my heart and soul and, and almost a decade of my life into building this thing. And this thing will not die because I've invested so much time into it. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think young people, they don't realize when you're young, you don't realize that you're going to fail. Right. And you're going to fail yeah. a lot. Yeah, for sure. And well, dude, you know, here. So a great, a great example is like my grip, that like patent pending grip shit I got. Yeah. Uh, that all happened. Like most of it was by mistake. Like it was from boards cutting out incorrectly, and then like I started finding these patterns and these grip textures and all this stuff that really evolved the boards. But it wasn't like it was like a mistake that happened like by fluke. It was me doing thousands of hours and building tons of boards to allow the opportunity for these mistakes to happen. And then maybe be like, oh, shit, I can utilize this mistake and make something better because of it. You know, that's great. I got an for easy sure. one so, for you. <laughs> sweet. Thank God, man. So <laughs> I saw I saw a puppy on a video and I saw a puppy in one of your pictures. We're dog guys. Yeah. Is that your dog? That's my puppy. Yeah, that's What's blue that dog. Tell me about that dog. So she is insane, first of all, but she's a uh, half lab, half Pomeranian. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so it's she's strange. Uh, yeah, the Pomeranian was the dad, uh, but uh, <laughs> thankfully, but uh, but yeah, she's nuts. She's uh, she's just this crazy little thing. She's like sweet as can be, but she's a little demon too, and she's always like running around tearing shit up. But my favorite thing is like she loves wood as much as I do. She always grabs sticks and brings them in and tears them apart. But uh, yeah, she's always laying in a pile of sawdust or you know bothering me at my feet when I'm building shit. But uh, yeah, she's a what's her name? Little, blue. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, she's we a good little, dogs, little yeah. shop hand. Yeah. Dude, me too. Man, yeah. yeah, she's great. Yeah, we actually got two. Uh, Rosie, she's a mutt. That's the rescue. So that was the easy one. <laughs> yeah. Setup. Oh, shit. So there's a follow-up. Gotcha. Um, you know, the great thing about a guy like you, uh, here, here's where I compliment you, right? The great thing about a guy <laughs> like you is you're hungry, you're driven. Uh, you, need, sure. you definitely have a vision, man. I think vision is is really important. But you know, for somebody who's growing as fast as you are, and you know, success is really coming. The definition of what success is, it has to, you know, it, it's a, it's evolving daily, right? So, Great what does success what does success look to you, like look like to you right now? No, that's a great question, man. I've actually done a lot of like internal reflection about this recently because, like. You know, kind of like what we were talking about earlier about like, you know, kids thinking that like success is just going to come and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's like I've always dreamed and like known I was going to be successful because that's the only thing that kept me going. Yeah. You know, and like, 
but it was kind of like, I'm going to hit this stage and everything's going to be fucking easy. You know, like after that, like it's going to be smooth sailing. Every single step higher is way more difficult, but like I've like gone through all the trials and shit to get to that next step to where by the time I'm there, I'm like ready for it, you know, but then it's just as hard. And I have to grow more to get ready for that next step after that. So like, basically I've figured out that no matter what step you're at, it's going to be like hard as hell. And if, and like, if you're always trying to look at the next thing, you're never going to be happy. So like, I've really, really focused on like enjoying the journey and enjoying like the, the, the process of it. Uh, you know, and like sitting back and being like, you know, two years ago, I was in this little corner of a shithole bar and making like 10 boards a week. And now I'm like, got this crew this like awesome crew helping build this shit have these crazy collaborations and we're doing like 200 boards like a week now pretty much uh yeah like actually like sitting back on occasion and absorbing it and like actually being in the moment for a minute and being like you know i right now i am the person i wanted to be when i started this thing Mm -hmm. and i now i want i want way more now but i need to realize i've hit that level that i wanted to be at yeah. and appreciate it and enjoy it and you know just like absorb every step of the way and not be like okay what's next be like okay i'm in this now i got friends and a crew and you know family that i love i got a i got a paycheck that's coming in from doing something that i created and that i love i get to talk about pop culture shit meet cool people all the time like it is pretty fucking good right now yeah. He's talking about me. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, yeah. no, I think that's really insightful, <laughs> right? Because I had a boss that I used to work for that, that had this saying, and it's like, when do we eat cake, right? Like that was this mm-hmm. metaphor for when do, we, when do we throw the party and when do we eat cake? And oftentimes what happens is when it's actually time to eat the cake, you're already on to the next goal, mm-hmm. the next objective, yeah. hitting the next sales target, whatever it is. So I think it's really insightful. Basically what you're saying is you're taking some time to sit back and eat some cake, right? For sure. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, uh, last, like, uh, last night I took my whole crew out for like this, like big seafood dinner and like, there's nothing going on except for that. We are doing a good job right now. And yeah. I just wanted everyone to have a good time because like, we're doing good. Yeah. You know? It's great. man. I got nothing else. That's, that's awesome, man. Well, um, you know, before we, uh, sign off here and, you know, hang out for a little bit after we hit the uh, record button, you know, let people know, uh, you know, the website, you know, social media, how they can find you, interact with you, uh, you know, and also to talk a little bit about, because I know that you offer custom boards too. And, you know, I'm sure us and some fans are going to want to get some uh, awesome custom yes. decks from you. So. Awesome, man. Cool. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, if you want to see most of my work, it's at Bear Walker Official on Instagram. Uh, you can visit our website, which is bearwalker.com. That's where we have everything that's up for sale right now. And you can see some news on what we have going on in the future uh yeah we do high-end custom boards they're a little pricey but they're worth it uh so if you do have something you want hit me up info at bearwalker.com with the subject line custom and we'll we'll see what we can do we only have five more spots for customs for 2020 uh but uh yeah dude we're, we're booked through like 2023 right now with shit which is yeah great but uh but yeah anyway go look at my shit <laughs> Fucking on something, send me a dm we'll stop it'll be great <laughs> There, man. It's been great talking to you. We're definitely going to have you back on the show. Uh, I I love being able just to vibe with people immediately, you know, whether if it's pop culture, business, and, you know, just the fact that you're a self-starter, you know, nothing was handed to you. Your your story's incredible, uh, inspirational uh, by far. So thank you again for joining us. Uh, For all the listeners, fans out there, make sure you check out Bear Walker. Um, And of course, follow us on social media, subscribe, like Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, the whole entire fucking internet. All <laughs> so uh, we will uh, sign off here and then we'll see you next week. Appreciate you for having me guys. Yes, sir. Yeah! Victory! And anger management? Fuck anger management.